purpose of this little talk is to talk about regression, one of the most frequently used tools in economics, business, and practically everything else. I'm going to start off with a very, very simple example where we fly to Paris. Now, let's say that the airfare to Paris is a thousand dollars, whatever you like. And we have a choice of a different number of nights. So we could, if we really like to go there, go for none nights, zero, one, two, three, four, five, or even six. Now, let's say that the cost of each night is $200. So we can work out the total cost of our trip, the very simple little equation. So it's going to be equals, and then the thousand dollars, we need to get that anyway, plus the number of nights times the nightly rate, which let's say is two hundred dollars. So if we go for no nights, it's going to cost us a thousand dollars. So we can find out the cost, six nights, is etc. Now let's do a regression on this. First of all, we must look at the data and see what a scatter plot would look like. Oh, and here it is, and it's unexpectedly, it's a straight line. So the number of nights is on the bottom. This is the x-axis. So the explanatory variable is the number of nights. The y-axis here is the total cost. And we can add a trend line by going to any of the dots, add trend line, and uh, let's put in display equation on chart and display the r squared value, which is the coefficient of determination. So here's our equation. y equals 200, so each night x is the number of nights, plus 1,000. So four nights is going to be 800 plus 1,000. Yeah, it works. Wow. So we could work out, say, five nights anything. We could predict the total cost provided it's within the range of the x values. Notice uh, this is a rather unfortunate way of writing the equation. It should really be y equals 200. should be the other way around. should be equals 1000 plus 200x. So this 1000 is the intercept. That's here. The intercept is the value of y when x is 0. So zero nights still costs us a thousand. The R squared value, that's the coefficient of determination. This explains how much of the variance in the Y, in the Y is explained by our model. It goes from zero to one, and here we've got a one, which is very good. All of it is explained. Let's cut that and go back to the data and run what we really want to do, which is a regression to get out some data. So go to data and then data analysis and ask for regression here. See regression. Now it asks us to put in the Y range. The Y range is going to be our dependent or response variable. That's going to be our total cost. Include the labels and our X range is the number of nights. That is the independent or explanatory variable. Put in labels and then click on residual plots. I want to see how much the residual changes. Now go there. Ah, here we go. Here's our residual plot. I just move it over here a bit and uh, make it all a bit larger. Now, what do we have here? The interesting things here are, first of all, the coefficients down at the bottom. So the coefficients for the intercept is a thousand, is what we'd expect. And for the x variable, which is the number of nights, it's here, it's 200, isn't it? So each unit increase that's one night in the x variable increases the dependent variable by 200. 
that's what we know. Each extra night costs us an extra $200. The p-value here is highly significant. Remember the rejection rule? If p is smaller than alpha, then we can reject the null hypothesis. This is very, very small. Of course it's small, because everything is on that straight line. Look up here, and we have the residual plot. Now, there is no residual, because all of those points were exactly on the line. So there is no residual. This is a perfect fit. Now we're going to look at uh, something quite not quite so sharp. This one is uh, a regression of house price against family income. House price against family income. So the family income explains the price of the house that the family bought. So here's a lot of data here. And I put a scatter plot here. So on the bottom is the family income, and on the, the y-axis is the price of the house that they bought. So we can see here from the equation y equals 2.04. So each increment, unit increment in income increases the price of the family. And it's a very good fit. R squared equals 0.9567. The intercept is 154,712, which is here which means that when they have no income, they can still somehow manage to buy a house costing that much money. Usually, uh, we tend to ignore the intercept, and it's some economists call it a uh, garbage collector, etc., because, in fact, there's not too much of interest there. What I'd like to draw your attention to is here is look how, as we move up the income scale, the dots the cross points seem to move further and further away from the trend line. So we need to check here the uh, residual. So let's do um, an analysis of it. So we cut this and uh, we are going to go to data analysis, and we'll do regression, and we put uh, the house price as the explained variable, and the family income is the independent variable, which we think has some effect. OK, everything is OK. Make sure we've got residual plots checked. Go OK. And here's the output. Over here is our, I'll just move it over, is our residual plot. Now, everything looks fine. You see the R squared value here is 0.95. Oh, you think it's a very good fit. But if we look at the residuals here, we can see that at the lower end of the income, they seem to be very tightly bunched. That's all right. But as we move up the income, the residuals move further and further away from the zero line, which indicates some sort of a problem. So we might want to do something uh, like put in um, a, a quadratic equation, etc., so that as the income moves up, there's some effect on the y value, or perhaps a logarithm. That might be a better idea. Anyway, make sure that you always do a residual plot and be able to interpret it. Before I go, I just want to show you, let's look at this r squared value, how to get the r squared value from the ANOVA output. So remember what the r squared is. It's SSR divided by SST. So we go equals. Now here is our SSR. Put in that C12 divided by the total. And we get here.
0.95, which is exactly the same as the R squared here. That's how it's calculated. Thank you very much. Thank you.